I'm looking for willing vessels, Jesus. I'm looking for people that are ready to go the mile, not cry out every time they get a prick of a needle or they fall down and cut somewhere. They're like, oh, I can't do this. God is looking for warriors for the kingdom. This is not a time for us to sit down and whine and be complacent and be like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. I don't feel so good today. Really? What if God took a day off? What if when you needed God right then and there, Jesus, like he needs us sometimes. Sometimes lives depend on our obedience and we just sit back and just be complacent. Well, I'm good over here. My kids are good. But he's putting sister so-and-so on your mind for you to pray, but you would not get up. Yes. Wow. What if God said, I'm going to take a day off today. I don't feel so good. Yeah, they're praying and stuff. People dying over there, but I'm not. I'm not. Your, your child is sick in the hospital. What if at that point God decides to take a day off? We do it every day. God may have a child sick. We are all his children. Somebody about to die. Parents can't even pray. And he wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning and say pray. And you're like, oh, no, I'm tired. Do you know, do you want the blood of another on your hands? Like I said, I don't know why we're going this direction, but I'm flowing. We have to get out of complacency. We complain too much. What does complaining do? You working against yourself when you complain. You ain't helping nothing. If anything, you're digging a deeper ditch for yourself. God don't like people that complain. And we all do it. I do it. I'm getting better. But it doesn't help. The time we spend complaining, we can pray. The time you spend whining, you can pray. The time we spend gossiping, you can pray. You can pray, you can pray. There is no excuse. And prayer is our only weapon against everything. For divorce, it's prayer. For depression, it's prayer. For thoughts of suicide, it's prayer. If you're broke, it's prayer. You can't make it, it's prayer. You think you're going to break down, it's prayer. You ain't got a car, it's prayer. You need help to pay your bills, it's prayer. Your kids are sick, it's prayer. You need something from God, it's prayer. It all comes down to prayer. So what, how are you going to receive from God when you won't even talk to him? Develop a relationship with God. I'm going to close out and I'm going to share with you guys 10 things. And I want you to write them down because they helped me through my ordeal. And as I was preparing for this, God shared some with me. And I want to share with you. And like I said, I like to back it up with scriptures. So I'm going to give you a few scriptures too. How do you thrive after divorce? First off, you can't thrive without God. There is no thriving without God. I don't care who's rich and out there that don't know God that's thriving. Are they really? Let's take a look at statistics. Kate Spade. She looked like she was thriving without God, didn't she? I don't know her to know God. I've done my research. But she was wealthy, doing good for herself. Yet she committed suicide. And then we had another one not a week after. I know so many people that killed themselves. And people may look happy. The internalizers. Everything is good over here. But they're not really that good. Number one. You have to put God first and foremost in your life. And I want you to put Mark 12 verse 30. Put God first and foremost in your life. Because when you put God first, you can never be last. Never. God never fails. I want to share with you a quick testimony. This week was so, it was so difficult for me. I don't know if it's because the enemy really didn't want me to come up here and speak and say what God had to say. And so for the start of the month, when I tell you attack after attack after attack, attack on my mind, attack on everything. And one day I said, God, I don't know what's going on, but I trust you. It came to the point where I thought my ex-husband had stopped paying my daughter's school fee. Because anything I receive from him, it goes towards her school fee. I take care of home. God does. And I checked the card to pay her school fees, and it said zero. I went ahead and paid it. The next week, it said zero. I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? And I called him and I said, 
There's something going on that I should know about so I can make plans. Oh, I switched jobs. I said, okay. So does that mean that she won't go to school? So for a good time frame, there was nothing on the card. And I paid her school fees. Mind you, I'm paying hers and Mark's. And of course, his dad is a phenomenal father. He helped. But that was starting to build up. Plus, I have other bills. <laughs> a lot of bills. But I try to be diligent with them. And I said, God, I don't know how you're going to do this so I can balance everything out on the month, the end of the month, but you're going to do it. Yesterday, I pulled up to the school. And the Holy Spirit said, check the account again. And I checked it. And there was over $1,000 on that card. I was only expecting $135 per week, but it seems like they paid everything that was owed. And I said, look at God. Look at God. What if I was whining, complaining? I'm not even going to church. I'm not going to no conference. I'm tired. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. And God made me to understand, how can you encourage other women if you ain't willing to go through it yourself? So everything that I go through, I go through it. I may not always smile through it, but I go through it because I understand that if I ask God to use me, he's going to have to teach me. He's going to have to give me the experience. You can't share what you've never gone through. You can't relate to what he needs relatable people, but you have to be able to go through the process. Put God first in your life. Develop, number two, develop and maintain an intimate relationship with God. Spend time with him. Spend time with God. Sometimes we get so busy in life that we don't have time to spend with God. But we have to make time. Because if he makes time for us, we have to make time for him. And the scripture tells us, seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness. And all other things will be added. And I love Brother Larry. I love him because this man is so wise. And he said something the other day. He said, the problem is we are seeking added things things that can only be added by God. And that's where we miss the mark. We're supposed to seek the kingdom first, but we out here seeking the added things, like the cars, the houses, the husbands, the blessings. Those things are added, they're given. We can't seek them and find them. We can't work for them either. Because promotion comes from where? Promotion comes from God. He doesn't mean only promotion in your job, in life, in general. So I want you guys to be mindful of that. And my scripture for that is Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6. It's develop and maintain an intimate relationship with God. Number three, learn to love yourself. Women of God, learn to love yourself. There's so many women that demand love from others but they don't love themselves. To truly be loved by anyone, you have to first love yourself. I mean, just accept everything about yourself. Every chipped tooth, every gap teeth, every nappy head, every cellulite, anything about yourself, love yourself. Because you did not create yourself, God did. And if he was pleased with how you looked and how he created you to be, what gives you the right to question how you look? Or what gives you the right when somebody criticizes you to believe it and receive that word? You have no right. You did not create yourself. Nobody can criticize me. You didn't create me. Hey, did you create me? Huh? Was you up there when God was making me? Or when he spoke me into my mother's womb or whatever that process was? Were you there? You don't know the intricate details of my body or my formation, my image, he does. And he's pleased with it. So I'm pleased with it. And you should too. Every part of you, love yourself. Because it opens up the door for somebody else to love you. Yes, have confidence in what God created. He created you just as you are. Every blemish, everything intact. Jeremiah 31 verse three. Now we're going to move on to number four. Oh, I love this one. No more people pleasing. You are accepted by God. Let me say it again. Stop trying to please he, she, and the old lady. No more people 
pleasing. The Bible said serve others. Didn't say kill yourself to please everybody. He said serve others. Love. Give. Help where you can. But stop trying to please people. Half the time when we're trying to please people, your heart is not in the right place. That means the motive isn't right. Let me give you an idea. <clears throat> if you set out in life to please everybody that comes into your life, to do what they want and work how they want and talk how they want, who's going to please God? You can't do the two. You can't. He said, you can't serve two masters. You will love one and hate the other. So your objective should, yes, absolutely do stuff for people. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know the scriptures. But stop trying to please everybody. You're going to wear yourself thin. And then you're going to have no, nothing to offer anyone. Stop trying to please everybody. Romans 15 verse 7. That should give you a breakdown of why you shouldn't. Focus on your children. For those who have children. Focus on your children. And on building a stronger, healthy relationship with them. Don't try to bring a man into the picture when you ain't developed no relationship with your kids. Are you kidding me? Why are you bringing him in? So he can dictate how your kids are raised? What if this man is not of God? What if this man is a maniac? What if this man is an abuser? Develop a relationship with your kids. Spend time, make memories with your kids. Teach your kids. My son has code words. And if I leave my son and my daughter with anyone's, in anyone's care, I tell them, look, you in charge. Anywhere they go with your sister, you go there. I need to know everything when I come and pick you up. And he will call me and say, Mom, I'm not, too, I'm not too comfortable with this. You have to teach your kids. Let's be honest. We live in a world now. You can't raise kids that don't know what to look for. I, try, I pray every day, God, give my son the spirit of discernment you gave me. Give my daughter the same thing. When I tell you God has answered that prayer, oh yeah, especially my daughter. She don't go to just anybody. She going to look you up from head to toe and then decide, should I really smile for this person or go to this person or should I even talk to this person? And she'll just say no. You have to spend time with your kids. Teach them the word of God. Sit down and talk to them. Take them, take them to church where they are fed the word of God. OCF does that brilliantly. I applaud the teachers and all they do. My children know the word like... My son looks forward to coming to Sunday school. He is excited. So I really applaud them. Number six, establish boundaries and learn to be assertive. Do not be a pushover. This world was not created for pushovers. If you are a pushover in this time and age, whew, you will endure some abuse. People are going to take advantage of you. Don't be a pushover. Know what you want, set the bar, and stay there. Stop going below for mediocre every time. Don't allow people to do that to you. You have to know what you want for yourself, whether it's a relationship, a job, career, whatever it is. Set expectations, set goals. Have goals for yourselves so that you know what you want to achieve, what you're not going to accept, what you will accept, and move forward from there. The next one is gain healthy relationships. Healthy relationships are good. And a lot of times we find ourselves with people that bring us down. It's always something negative. It, they call you with something negative or did you know what happened with so and so? It's, it's one unhealthy thing after the other. How do you, you don't benefit from that. You need friends that can feed your spirituality. That can pray you up out of a thing. That can speak in your life. Yes, sometimes you will have to do the encouraging. But I truly don't believe it needs to be all the time. 
And every time you call me, I have to leave something to go and speak life into you. How about you? You, you can speak it into yourself. You can speak life into your situation. But you do have those people that kind of bring you down. I'm not saying push them aside, totally. But put them over here. Say I love you and I'm praying for you. But I'm going to need you not to call me as much as you do. And I'm not going gonna, gonna to be honest with you. Sometimes I see my phone ringing and I intentionally don't answer it. Because the enemy knows sometimes he uses people close to you. You will just get out of your prayer closet, just got a word from God. And then here comes the enemy using that friend and just speak something totally to you. And guess what? You're thrown off. So you have to govern that. Number eight, give back. Whether it's to the community, to people that have walked you through some things, talked to you through some things, prayed you through some things, give back to the kingdom with your service, your ministries. Use your ministries for the greater good. Number nine is build and dedicate yourself to ministry, the ministry that God has placed in your heart. Because everyone has a ministry. Everyone has a ministry. And if you've been through something and something that hurts your heart when you see it or something that you, you would do without getting paid for it, it's your gift and your ministry. Use your ministry for the greater good. And last but not least, to thine own self be true. To thine own self be true. I want to use an analogy so you guys can understand what I mean. I'll use Nicole for example. People have to stop trying to be like somebody else. You can't live somebody else's life and live, live yours as well. So, I'm Misha. God deposited something on the inside of me for a specific purpose, a specific people, a specific whatever it is. And only I can do what God placed me here to do unless he so chooses to replace me, right? Nicole is functioning in what God called her to do, what he placed her here to do. Here me, I come and I want to do what Nicole is doing. So I'm trying to be Nicole, do what God has called Nicole to do. So if I'm over here trying to do what Nicole was called to do, who's going to do what Misha was called to do? So who's going to do what you were called to do when you're trying to do what somebody else was called to do? Do you understand what I mean? You can't flow in someone else's anointing. It's not possible. It's not, you're not going to get anywhere. So you have to be true to yourself. Love yourself. Celebrate the small victories. Don't be too hard on yourself. Us as women, we are so hard on ourselves and easy on everybody else. We will beat ourselves up in no time. That is not the will of God for us. Celebrate the small victories. Always celebrate yourself. If nobody else will celebrate you, celebrate yourself. It could be a manicure, a pedicure. For me, half the time is just going in my bathroom and being able to close the door without Mark and Leanna coming to knock on the door. Just celebrate yourself. I go in there with my book, my candles, and I'll just sit down. Maybe for only 10 minutes. But I'll take it over over nothing at all. But celebrate yourselves. Take time for yourself. Women, we lose ourselves in our kids. Some of us can't even identify who we are anymore because we've lost ourselves in raising our kids. You can't do that. You have to have time for you. There is, again, a time and a place for everything. There's a time to celebrate Nisha. There's a time to celebrate yourself. Make sure that you celebrate yourself. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Now, did everybody write a word up here? Everybody? 